Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about two-factor authentication. And no, we're not going to be doing those insecure methods like email or text messages. We're talking about the free stuff only, TOTP codes, time-based two-factor authentication. Because two-factor authentication is those six-digit codes. And yes, no matter how hard Apple and Google would like to get rid of them, uh, they're never going to be going away because people are way too slow to adopt things. And as we all know, uh, because people are too slow to adopt things, it's time to prepare ourselves now so that we are ready for the future. And also just because it's just flat out better than like email or text messages. Two-factor authentication is just do it, okay? Uh, if you're asking questions, you're, you're asking the wrong, probably asking the wrong kinds of questions. And no, I don't want to hear because someone on YouTube told you that two-factor authentication is used by the deep state. Even if it is SMS or email two-factor, you need to use it. I will present some workarounds in a future video. That being said, uh, I will be doing Android and iPhone. You can pick, take your pick. Or if you're some weirdo who has both, uh, you can watch both of them if you want, or just keep watching to give me more engagement. That helps too. <laughs> so here I have in front of me uh, Aegis. If you're on Android, you Android users out there, you need to use Aegis, okay? It's pretty much the best one. I've tried all of them, yes. I've tried also tried and OTP, and and OTP is ugly as sin and probably should be thrown away. And OTP also stores all of your backups unencrypted on your phone. Yeah, totally best practices. Does this exist on iPhone? No, it does not. <laughs> We're oh. only doing Android right now. Then okay? it's dead to me. Of course, what you could do is you'll say, well, you could download Aegis for, you know, from the Google Play Store. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to stoop that low. Instead, what we're going to do is uh, if you know how to do this, you know how to do this. You go to GitHub and you look up Neo Store. OK, this is now my recommendation for people to download open source apps on Android. Uh, it has just a, in general, just a better UI. So if you have like a, one of those newer, those newer fancy schmancy Android 12 or 13 phones, like you should, you should, I hope you do. Uh, if you, if you live in a country where it's hard, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm unfortunately, this is the world we live in. Uh, Neo store is where you can download lots of great open source apps. But the real reason why you do it is because Asteroids like interface is so bad <laughs> and it's just better in every way. And all you got to do is you go into the search bar when you download it and you look up the Aegis. Uh, so you just download Aegis, okay? You download it through the Neo store or you download it through the Play store, you know. You do you, but if you download it through the Play store... <laughs> Aegis is a free, secure, and open source two-factor authentication app. You click the next button. And then it says, Aegis is a security-focused two-factor authentication app. Tokens are stored in a vault, which is encrypted with the password of your choosing. And yes, this is the one thing that makes this unique from all of the other Android uh, TOTP code generators out there. And it's kind of crazy. Did you know that even Google, Google Authenticator by Google doesn't even do this? And it, it's honestly disgusting. <laughs> yeah, like none of them use... None of them, like, lock your OTP codes in any way, which I, I guess now that you're bringing it up is a little bit weird. And because this stuff should be, like, as your passwords, sacrosanct, you would think. Uh, now, uh, you can pick between multiple options here, so you can pick an option of none. Uh, do not do not do this. There's a reason why they say in big, bold text this option is not recommended. Typically get two options. You can do password or biometrics. Now, typically... Uh, I would prefer a password, and I would strongly recommend everyone do a password first. Now, that being said, I understand that some people uh, with certain phones have the ability to use biometrics. Okay, in my current situation, I do not. Um, but if you have, like, you know, like a Samsung phone or a Pixel phone with a nice fingerprint reader, uh, you can absolutely uh, take advantage of biometrics. Uh, just, I wouldn't recommend using your face because it's really finicky and it's been broken in the past on Android. Uh, but your fingerprint's fine. Um, but just be aware, I would just recommend using a password because what if you lose all your fingers or something, you know? Or, uh, I know yeah, that's gets highly, highly likely. Event. Highly unlikely, but uh, just be use a password to be on the safe side. And for demonstrative purposes, because I cannot use biometrics, I will be using a password. 
you click, you see you tap next. And then it says, warning, if you forget this password, you will lose permanent access to your tokens. So you need to have a second good password in addition to your password manager and the password to your device. Okay, so please, please, I beg you, make this good. Okay, and then it's Aegis is set up and ready to go. And then what you can do is you can select QR codes. Now, uh, I know that uh, the more boomer people out there like me in the audience hate scanning QR codes because we don't know what's happening behind the scenes of these QR codes. They're just a bunch of pixels and they could be trying to deliver malware to my machines or tracking link to my phones for all I know. So I mean, I'm, I'm more worried about, uh, about what my phone is doing when it's scanning a link because is it preloading that link is it, what is it doing with it well how is it acquiring that information well i'll tell you right now aegis has you covered while you can try to scan a qr code in the traditional fashion you are also allowed to save something as an image and scan the qr code hmm. so if you click save as image and if i actually just go into uh, the photos app here i actually have a qr code this is just a sample qr code i have pre-installed if i was saucy i would have made this like my monero wallet or something um but we're not we're not that we're not that clever today it's just also just because it's incredibly difficult for me to transfer files to to a, this android simulation and then what you can do is you can create the name of your code and then you can also actually what's cool here is you're able to manually view um the TOTP seed. Now it's kind of broken because I'm using just a sample QR code here. And let's just say I am logging into the email, the fake email here, which was provided to me by Google. So this is no doxing or anything. Uh, this is Alice at Google.com. But you can name this, you know, pretty much whatever you want. Let's just, I would just call this Google. And then issuer, uh, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter. This is all just stuff that's usually filled out automatically for you. And then you get your uh, two-factor seed. And typically, the way this works is these seeds are just random numbers and letters. So uh, do not worry about the random numbers and letters. I'll show you what you can do with this later. And what's really cool, too, is uh, you can actually select an icon. You can pick custom icons for all of your stuff. And then if you click save, and I'll show you how to do that later. So all you have to do is hit save when you're done, and then you get your TOTP code. And as you can see, look at that. I now get my six digit code, which is now bound to the time zone that I currently reside in. Isn't that great? So if you change your time zone, it's going to change the code? No, if you change your time zone, this code won't change and it will be invalid when you try it in the new time zone. And this is why I'm going to say this next disclaimer is you need to download when you set up two factor authentication your for TOTP, your backup codes, those backup codes, not only bail you out if you lose access to your phone or if your phone gets put, thrown in a pool or, uh, you know, someone steals your phone or uh, something is, you know, something as menial as you took a flight to a uh, Dubai and you now can't log into your account because this phone right here is bound to the central time zone what do you do and the answer is you use one of your backup codes the backup codes are your bailout for exactly this uh if you click on the three dots here yes the ellipsis the hamburger menu whatever click on the settings and you can change the settings of the app now uh, what we can do is you can change this to override uh, your current theme and because my theme was set to light mode by battery saver of course we're going to change it to dark theme because that's what only a sane person would do can um, i change the color uh no then i hate the app i don't like it welcome to android <laughs> welcome to iphone hope you like it oh wait you don't get a choice because they're a duopoly okay behavior you can copy tokens when tapped this is really only useful if you know you're logging the stuff on your phone a lot uh, highlight tokens when they're tapped, you know, is whatever. Um, first off, you can use the import and export function here. So you can export your vault. And what this will do is this will actually encrypt a JSON, an encrypted JSON file with your password of your, your stuff in JSON or TXT. But you, you should, should just use, use JSON because yeah, it's just, just better than yeah, TXT. Yeah, just use JSON. Okay. And then you can also re-import them uh to, through here too um, but if we go back here uh if you are a normie and you back up everything through your google account you can also set up backups through your google account you know just so you're aware 
Um, and that you have to, and you do have to manually opt into this. This is not something that is done for you. And they do this because, as we all know, Google is a privacy nightmare. And uh, now, now that we got all the backup stuff out of the way, you've backed up all of your codes, right? You store them in a safe place. You know, maybe something other than the phone that you're using to do all of this. Hopefully, maybe, yes. Okay. Uh, we can finally get to the best part of this app, Icon Packs. What? Icon Packs? Yes. Did you know that there are people who create Icon Packs for something as menial as a two-factor authentication app? This person created Icon Packs for very, all of your favorite companies. You know, look, we got uh, we got Activision Blizzard, you know, the company that had to fire a bunch of people because of sexual abuse. You know, we have uh, AdGuard, one of my personal favorites. Uh, we have uh, Algolia. You see them everywhere. Uh, Amazon. All Pretty much any, anyone you can possibly think of. I am willing to bet someone has made an icon pack for them. Look, for all the Zoomers out there, look, we have Discord, your favorite. <laughs> Isn't it great? You get icons for all of them. Bet you all you saps using Google Authenticator wish you could get custom icons like this. Well, that's one of the coolest parts about using using Aegis here. This having access to all of these custom icon packs, and it's actually really, really great. And that's pretty much how you use Aegis in a nutshell. Um, but I'm not done yet. Uh, you, I know there are some some poor apple users out there look guys i read your feedback in the lockdown mode video and yes look i have a saucy anime girl as as my as my you know as my wallpaper because this is what all the young kids like right yeah this app right here the app on the top left rivo otp i, I highly recommend everyone use this now i want everyone to be aware that there is a version of this on the mac app store however when you download it on the app store from your mac you will download a crippled version that requires you having your phone in bluetooth range or in wi-fi range of oh that computer. seems incredibly stupid so it's incredibly useless you see it says in you know big letters here two-factor authentication done right and yes i have scrounged every single ios two-factor authentication app and i finally settled on rival all of them are just terrible it's the only this is the only app that actually lets you export your codes like every other app that i've come across all you do is click continue okay now uh you can pick a storage provider and you'll actually have a bunch of other options here so if you have google drive or dropbox downloaded on your device uh, you will actually be able to sync them with another provider but why would you do that you're literally putting your pat your two-factor authentication codes in plain text for literally anyone to view that's crazy you shouldn't even do that heck that's one of the reasons why i would say that icloud shouldn't be enabled on your device that you can see they're like, you should enable it to have you do it. Do not save your stuff to iCloud. iCloud is not zero knowledge. If your provider does not has access to your stuff, that pretty much means they can read all of your two-factor codes and then they get your password out of a data breach and you're screwed. So do not use iCloud or Google Drive or Dropbox because they do not protect your data properly. Even NextCloud because NextCloud is an end-to-end -end encrypted effectively. Okay, click continue. And then what you get is this little option right here. It's like, please configure your master password. Again, now, unlike uh, Aegis, uh, it is mandatory that you create a master password. And this is just because of the way Rival OTP is. It's mandatory because, uh, you know, everyone on Apple devices has varying degrees of what biometrics they have access to. Now, you can add them later, but you still need to create the password in case biometric fails for whatever reason, but for some reason if any reason at all. Again, like what I said, what if you lose a hand? You know, what if your face gets disfigured or burned? You know, please just do it. It's, it's good for you. And it includes the people who are running Aegis as well. If you're still watching, that is. Uh, so what you do is you go to Rival OTP, and then once you create your strong, complicated password, and, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, create a strong password that is not... A, weak, a strong password so if you try doing what i did with you know 
like with Aegis, it's like, eh, eh, nope, can't do that. Sorry, bucko. Too weak. Try a different one. So no, you can't do this. And then once you get past, you've typed in your password, uh, you are now pre presented to type in a passcode. Now I am going to type in only the finest passcode in all the land. <laughs> Uh, uh, nope can't use it just kidding can't do that uh, you can't you're not allowed to do that you need to actually make it something good what you want to make it one two three four five six and uh, uh, nope you can't do that and now you get to present it with the option if you want to use touch id or face id um, and personally, I chose to do this because I believe it is within my threat model. Plus, they have to get past my password, but you can skip past it and do whatever. And then, boom, you have, uh, you know, your OTP. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. You now know how to use two-factor authentication. And why do you... Now, why, why do you say I chose to do, you know, Android and iOS? Because I believe, even if you don't use either of these platforms, you still need to know both. Because if my YouTube statistics tell me anything, because YouTube statistics clearly tell me everything, is that many of the people who watch me actually know what they're doing. You know, shocker, right? Who else would pursue watching a YouTube video about some amiibo bra bragging about uh, how to use technology in a smart way? And the reason why I bring this up is because uh, what if, you know, your your mother or, I don't know, your, uh, your grandma or your aunt or, why are they all women? Or your uncle, you know, all have problems like with their phones or, you know, and you want to help them take that next step. They want to, they, they recently, you know, let's say they recently got their accounts compromised because someone did something to them and uh, you need to do something about it. And what better way to do it than by knowing what apps to use and providing people a solution be sure to like this video. Be sure to like this video for all of those poor people who have to use uh, 111111 as their password. Uh, I hope you don't do that. Uh, thank you all for watching. We'll see you all later. And uh, I hope uh, you all enjoy the holiday season. <laughs> Uh, however you might enjoy it, you know, even if, if it is just curling up and uh, dying in despair because you have no friends and family. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Oh my gosh, that's a zombie. Well, it isn't evident right now. I'm actually playing Minecraft. Oh wait, it's not Minecraft. It's called Mine Clone. Uh, one change I made is I'm uploading this to the second channel, so that way I can advertise it if people are interested, and then people can watch my thoughts just really late. There's like a part during the Congress hearings in 2018 where like Jeff Bezos reaches off screen and someone hands him like a wine glass. I'm not even kidding, it's real. <laughs>